So when migrating from G Suite to Office 365, there might be some things that, you know, you need to reform or rebuild in the M365 space. Um, the benefit there, though, uh, um, is, you know, there's an entire uh, suite of offerings and or an entire product space uh, within Microsoft that's tied in with Office 365 that that is not necessarily tied in with with G Suite or that that Google itself doesn't directly offer, at least right now as part of the Google Workspace. So when you're talking about building out environments in Azure, um, the on-premise ties uh, from Azure AD to Active Directory, things like that, those are all fairly seamless integrations with your existing on-prem Microsoft environments um, that, that just don't exist or aren't as seamless uh, when you're trying to tie it in with, with a G Suite system. So uh, okay. that's one of those where you know folks may want to may want to migrate even with the uh, understanding that they may need to kind of rebuild some things knowing that they kind of get those additional benefits. Okay, and then I know that we've probably talked about this before, but isn't Google Workspace or G Suite increasing their prices for enterprise users? Or they might have already, that might have been like a month ago at this point. Um, but isn't um, there some cost savings there, potentially? Yeah, p potentially. It, it all depends on on how it's being used and how it's being licensed. Um, and and don't, don't quote me here, because I'm not a, a Google aficionado, aficionado necessarily, but... Um, yeah, it's my understanding that for tenants, Google tenants that exist that have more than 300 users, they've um, discontinued the ability to use their, you know, more small business uh, level, you know, suites. So, um, whereas previously you could go up to however many users you needed to and still have those lower level licensing tiers where you're paying, you know, two, four, six dollars a month, whatever they are, mm -hmm. um, they've discontinued the ability to, to use that for any tenants that exist that have more than 300 users is the way that I understand it. Okay. Um, I, so that I kind of forces folks with larger companies to, to have to buy a, a, a higher level license. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then uh, I guess in terms of like migrating to Microsoft from G Suite, is there any specific complexity there that is like overlooked by, I guess, internal IT departments? I mean, I know we're a Microsoft only company that we do this right. all the time. Uh, is there something that I guess other companies would most likely miss first time around if they're trying to do this on their own. Um, possibly. So the the one that stands out to me or that I can think of immediately is um, to do with the way that file management is handled. Um, file management tends to be something that um, the folks can overlook a lot of times, even when they're just moving from on prem to 365. Uh, it's it's kind of commonplace. Everybody has their their folder structures and their file structures. If you're an individual, you have your personal Google Drive. Um, if you're a team, maybe you have a team drive in Google, um, and, and that's kind of how things are used. Um, there's a similar structure in Office 365 where you have one drive for individuals and SharePoint uh, for teams or groups. Um, and SharePoint exists kind of in the background of, of everything file management wise and, and a lot of workflow pieces in Office 365. So even OneDrive is sitting on a on a SharePoint framework. but um, the piece that gets often overlooked specifically when moving from Google Drive is uh, the way that file management is handled within Google. Everything is owned um, kind of by individuals when it comes to things that are shared. So, um, as opposed to, so let me let me back up and actually rephrase okay. that. So, the way that the way that file management is handled in Google. Um, when a, an individual user has a Google Drive and they decide that they need to create a space for everybody to collaborate, right? It's very easy to just click the share button and share a folder with a group of people. So what we see a lot of times when we come into companies are, you know, let's just say John Smith has, um, you know, works in the HR department and the HR department needs a folder that everybody can work in. They need a folder that they can add files to and take files out of or, you know, work on the same files together. So, you know, John Smith will create an HR folder in his personal Google Drive um, and share it out with the team. And then the team just sort of seamlessly goes in there and does whatever they need to do. Mm -hmm. Well, um, that works great in, in Google because if John Smith ever leaves the company, those other users will retain access to that because it's sitting in their Google Drive now. They have a, a copy of it sitting in their Google Drive um, and, and they've actually been assigned as an owner of that folder. So if John Smith leaves the company, um, you know, they'll be able to retain access to those files. Uh, but what a lot of folks will try to do, a lot of IT departments will think they're, the plan should be when they migrate from Google to Office 365 is just to migrate everybody's individual Google Drive directly to a OneDrive. And um, that technically they are competing solutions. It's a one for one move, move over. However, that that sharing component is something that kind of gets overlooked 
because if you move um, John Smith in this case, uh, his Google Drive over to OneDrive, even if you replicate the uh, the sharing permissions, so you may have everybody uh, that could access those files before can still access it once they've moved over to Office 365. Mm -hmm. The problem is at that point with the way that uh, Microsoft handles file management and file ownership, those files are owned only by that one person, by John Smith. So once we've migrated over to O365, those other users are no longer owners. They may have read, write, edit, delete access, everything, but they're not technically file owners, which means when John Smith leaves the company, if his OneDrive is uh, decommissioned because his account was disabled, all those other users that had access to those files will all of a sudden see those files missing. They won't be able to get to them anymore. Um, so for that reason, we always recommend if, um, you know, it's kind of changing the mindset. In Google, it's more if I need to share something, I just click the share button and that's all I really need to do. In Microsoft, it's more about thinking about where should I hold these files? And our recommendation is always, you know, if you have a file or folder that needs to be owned and operated by a single person, um, and it can be shared and collaborated with occasionally by other people, that's not a problem. You can absolutely share from OneDrive. But if it needs to consistently and constantly be updated or managed by a group of people um, and something that those people are going to need to retain access to after anybody leaves the company, they need to be in a SharePoint site or in a team somewhere. Um, and the reason being that SharePoint site of that team is going to have multiple owners and is going to stay active regardless of what happens with the user accounts that are connected to it. So um, kind of just prevents you from possibly losing data if somebody leaves the company. Okay. And then uh, I guess, is there anything else that you want to specify? And <laughs> just, are there any other extraneous details that you feel are valid to talk about? Um, I think it's, uh, I mean, there are some some additional details and I mean, we could probably sit here and talk for the next four hours, right? Yeah, about all the- I chose the right person. <laughs> yeah, <to talk> about, <laughs> about all the, all the different <laughs> items, but, um, you know, Google Forms is another one. Uh, Google Forms is a, is a really great tool, um, you know, and that's that's the thing too, is right, when, when we talk about these things with just amongst ourselves or with our clients, I'm never gonna be a person that comes in and says, oh, Google has terrible tools or, you know, things don't work. They're, they're good tools and they have their uses. There are ups and downs to, to both platforms. Obviously, you know, being a Microsoft shop, we see and live and breathe, you know, all things Microsoft. And so we're always going to be, uh, advocates for those products and in my opinion you know whenever we see a company that's looking to potentially migrate we take that use case and and we review their scenario and if we feel like it's going to benefit them to to make that migration we always recommend that um but to back up and talk about google Forms specifically it's a great tool it has a lot of flexibility and um it, it's actually a, a more sort of fully featured uh tool set than um the quote unquote direct competitor in microsoft Forms. so what i mean by that is you create a Google form that's attached back to a spreadsheet or, or a, a Google sheet in this case, um, or something something of that nature, you may have different branches, you may have alerts set up with a Google forms, you may have different things that that form is doing. It's not just, you know, fill this data out and send it to somebody. It's filling the data out, it's storing the data, it's manipulating the data, it's sending alerts to people. It may be tied in with a Google site, it may be tied in with a Google Drive somewhere that, you know, is relying on that form to, to exist. Mm -hmm. um, there are absolutely tool sets that do those types of things in Office 365. We have, you know, Power Automate, we have SharePoint. Um, we've got all these different tools that we can create that business function. So if you've got a specific business function that you're doing with Google Forms, you can still perform that function in Office 365. Um, the big key there is though, it's not just a matter of copy paste where we're gonna take the Google Form or we're gonna move it over to Office 365, turn it into an, an, a Microsoft Form and expect it to function exactly the same. Um, in some cases that can work, uh, you know, in the more basic forms and things like that. And in some cases there's things that Microsoft forms uh, does that doesn't necessarily tie back to what Google does. But I would say the vast majority of the use cases that I've seen when folks are using, you know, really sophisticated Google forms, um, the appropriate response tends to be to rebuild that business function uh, using SharePoint, Power Automate, or some of the other tools in, in the Office 365 suite. Okay. Well, very cool. There's a, a wealth of information there, and I, I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with me about it. So uh, thank you, AJ. No problem.